Do not skip this intro, it's important for your health. Gotta set the stage on this one. Even after the intro, I continued to set the stage while I was uh, recording the video. This is the toughest video in this series. And you see the length of it, and that's basically because it's two episodes put in one. I ultimately decided it made sense to put semi-solid platforms and moving semi-solid platforms in the same video. I explain that in a minute, whenever I actually get into the video. But the main thing I wanna say is, if you've been binging these videos and you're a little bit tired, I know I said this the last time, but I really mean it for this video, it is best to have fresh eyes and a fresh brain whenever watching this video, all right? Don't work yourself too hard. Even if you're thinking about pushing through or just starting it while you're tired, don't do that. It's gonna be harder for you to learn from it and harder for you to pay attention. It's very, very important that you follow me really closely in this video. There's a lot of times I had to go back in this video and even correct myself. Of course, I do it all as it arises. So for you, it should be pretty smooth, but you know, I'm saying that the point is is that this is a video that you need to pay attention to and that you need to absorb everything you can from it. Don't feel pressured to watch it all at once. Just take your time, do this video while you're fresh, and once you get through this video, it is smooth sailing. This will be a, a true test of metal. Not really. I mean, kind of. It's like I said in the last video. This is just another instance of, yeah, we, we even compared to the last video, we get a little bit more advanced again. That's just kind of something that's going to have to happen whenever you're dealing with collisions. They're tough. And that's why I wanted it to be as solid as I think it is currently. So that way, once you're done with these, you can just be done with them and you can get on to the more fun stuff about your game, like making levels, figuring out the other mechanics you want to put in your game around the basic collision engine and stuff like that. So yeah, just be fresh, take your time, be careful and pay attention, and you're gonna do great. I know you are. If you got to this point, you absolutely are gonna do great on this video. Again, I said it last time, and I'm gonna say it again in the next episode, so you're gonna hear it again because you're gonna be there. Look at the views on this video, and then look at the views on the first video in this series. You know, that's you. You're my special little cabbage. You can do it. You've already proven that you can. So here we go. <laughs> I, I love it. I do all these, I do these like pep talks preemptively and it probably all it does is just scare you ah. i feel like i remember teachers doing things like that and just being like well i wasn't worried today and now i am but legitimately you shouldn't be worried if you've seen my videos you know that i am a worrier and you know that i am overly cautious and careful especially when it comes to teaching things so uh this is me absolutely projecting onto you this video was a nightmare to edit more than anything. And so I'm getting, I'm, I have residuals from that. So in my head, because it was hard to edit for some reason, I think that means it's going to be hard for you to follow. But in fact, there, I put so much work into the editing that probably makes it a pretty easy one to follow. It's just a long video. So I don't know. You're going to do great. All right. Oh, and one last thing. Don't skip around in this video at all. Once I cut you loose in a second, you're going to hear me uh, probably start complaining or start prepping you again in the same way that I did because I recorded this like four weeks ago. But sprinkled in all that is always important things. And again, you don't want to miss any details in this video. This is not a click around kind of video. This is a take the journey with me. There's even a, a nice fun little part later in the series where um, I find a bug, again, that we fix immediately, but uh, I kind of just get to torture myself for a little bit there, so that'll be fun for you. All right, extra long intro over. See ya on the other side. That was from The Emperor's New Groove. I have had enough of restarting this tutorial. I didn't know it was going to be like this. I didn't know. 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 Family wedding. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to be going the same pace I always go, explaining everything as I go, but I either could have focused on just doing semi-solid platforms or doing semi-solid platforms bundled in with moving semi-solid platforms, and I've decided to bundle them together for this reason. The principle behind it is very simple, so you'll be able to understand it once I talk about it, and two, trying to isolate those two things from each other would basically mean we would have to go back in and edit lots of the code for the semi-solid wall by itself, okay? We need to start thinking ahead and I'm using this as a teaching opportunity to whenever you're making game systems like this, sometimes you have to think a little bit ahead and you have to program things knowing that they're gonna be relatively intertwined or it's gonna be much easier on you ultimately to do them both at the same time. So there's gonna be a lot of code and I'm gonna have to explain a lot of things it's just going to be more than what we've been doing. So with that being said, let's just freaking get started. Made a platform for semi-solid walls. It's just this blue one, tiles like this, uh, and I made a purple one. That's the same thing. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to use the blue one as the static one and the purple one as the moving one. So like I said, we're doing them both together, and we're going to start from the perspective of the moving platform one. And then as we work on it, I'm going to explain to you how the semi-solid idea works. 
Okay, so I figured it would be much easier for me to just do a little animation here to explain this to you uh, before we start doing anything. So don't skip this part. We'll get into it in a second, I promise. But here's the main idea. The current code that we have for our Y collisions is pretty good. We're going to keep it, but we're actually only gonna keep it for our upwards collisions because when it comes to going downwards, it's not quite specific enough or clever enough. And this is why we're doing semi-solids and moving semi-solid platforms at the same time. So simply put, the core idea of colliding with a semi-solid platform only from one direction, specifically from the above direction, is that we only want to collide with a semi-solid platform if the top of that platform is below the bottom of our player. Otherwise, if that's not true, it'll look something like this. And if this is true, then that means our player should fall through it. And if we are checking downwards for walls or semi-solid walls, then you can see here how our collision mask still actually would be overlapping with our semi-solid wall. We would still be detecting a collision from it. However, if we use a function like instance place instead of place meeting, instance place works exactly the same as place meeting, except place meeting just returns a true or a false, false if not colliding, true if colliding, and instance place returns no one if not colliding, so no ID, or it returns an ID of the colliding instance you're looking for. So if we have the ID of this platform, we can then basically reference its bounding box top and the player's bounding box bottom and see if the player's bounding box bottom is above the bounding box top of this object. Great, that's the idea. Now, because this is going to be our full downwards collision, we also want to include object walls. So that's one more type of object to look for, but also consider a scenario like this where the player is falling downwards at let's say four pixels per second. And so this is where the player is checking for objects, but the player is running into this many semi-solid walls and a wall. That's four different instances that the player's colliding with. So if we were to use instance place for this, Game Maker would basically just pick one of those objects to return its ID. We don't want that. We need to have information from all of them. For example, we need to know that the player should not be colliding with this semi-solid because the player is below it. And the player also needs to know which of these three objects is the highest up. We don't want the player to, at best, miss the semi-solid platform and, at worst, get clipped all the way into the wall like this. So we need information from all of these objects. And now we bring in instance place list, which is exactly what you would assume it does. It is the same as the instance place function, except you can get a full list of the objects you're colliding with save them into a data structure, which we'll talk about when we get there. A data structure list is very similar to an array. But then once we have all four of those, we can set up a loop in our code that will let us run through each one and we can compare all of their properties, such as which of these walls are actually below the player, which of them are semi-solid walls and which are just regular solid walls, and which one of them is the highest up while still being below the player. <laughs> And lastly, as far as wanting to include our moving platforms with this, uh, we can take a slightly different scenario and look at this. We'll say that these are three separate overlapping semi-solid platforms. One that is moving down, one that is not moving, and one that is moving upwards. Now, let's say on this frame of the game, they all line up in the exact same pixel position, right? And their bounding box tops are all the same, and our player has just on this frame also landed on them. We also want to compare the speeds of any moving walls below us, and this would include solid walls as well, so solid moving platforms eventually. We want to compare the speeds of these platforms, so that way we can pick the one that is going to be the highest up next frame. We want a moving platform from below to pick up our player. So yeah, the idea here is with semi-solids, we only want to collide with ones that are already below the player, and when it comes to our downwards collisions, we just want to make sure that we're passing a couple checks. And so now our downwards collisions will basically just grab any of the walls that we're colliding with and then compare the information between them logically. So that way we can pick a single wall that meets all of the criteria that we want. That being that it's either a semi-solid wall that is already below the player or it's a solid wall. We want to return the highest up of that group of walls so we don't snap down past other ones. And we want to prioritize any platforms that are moving upwards 
and therefore the ones that are moving upwards the fastest. And then once we pick our platform, we can store that platform's ID in a variable so we can reference it for other things that we're gonna be doing, such as inheriting its left and right movement speeds. But that's actually very, very simple. And there's a few specific things we end up doing to kind of really clean up the Y movement and making everything look as nice as possible. But that's the gist of what we're doing. So, okay, let's get into it. Whew. So, like I said, we're gonna start with the principle of moving platforms first. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create two objects, okay? First, I'm going to create object semi-solid wall and I'll set that to be the blue one. This is just gonna be the static one that doesn't move at all. Now create another object and then this one will be called object semi-solid, I'll call it move plat, semi-solid move plat. I'm gonna set it to be the purple sprite. I'm gonna set it to be the child of the semi-solid wall, right? So. First, I'm gonna let you in on, on a little bit of a secret. I'm gonna move these up to where the wall is first. So my secret is all walls and all semi-solid walls um, are going to have the variables that account for speed and movement. So just an X speed and a Y speed. That doesn't mean that they're all gonna move. It just means that we know that all of our like physical environment has these properties. So for example, in my semi-solid wall, even the one that's not gonna be moving, I'm gonna set an X speed to be zero and a Y speed to be zero. There we go, and a Y speed to be zero. And then in my object semi-solid moving platform, I can add an event and then I just deleted the event again. So it inherits the uh, the parents code or you could just close the semi-solid platform and then open it back up and the create event should be here from the inherited semi-solid wall. The only reason I'm gonna be splitting these up like this where I'm gonna have the moving version of the semi-solid platform just be a child of the regular one and eventually we're going to have the moving version of the wall be a child of the regular wall even though they'll have the same properties and everything. I'm just doing that so in some instances, we can just check for the moving platform versions instead of checking, you know, all versions of it, right? Especially when it comes to the solid moving platforms. Sometimes you just want to check for the ones that you know are going to be moving, right? And you can just kind of set a rule for yourself that, you know, anytime you have a platform that's going to be moving, make sure it's a child of the moving version of the wall and not the regular wall. That'll make more sense whenever we get to it, but for now, just set it up this way. So in my experience, a difficulty with kind of figuring out moving platforms, be they solid or semi solid is figuring out when they need to do their logic compared to the things checking for them, right? So for example, cutting back in again from the future, so I can also do this explanation a little bit better. So yeah, like I said, uh, every single object in your game first runs a creation code and then runs the begin, regular, and end step events, and then runs your draw event code, all in that order. And then, you know, the other events also have an order too, but these are the important ones right now. The issue I wanna highlight is, let's say we have two moving platforms here and we have the player. Now, if they all are happening in in the same step event, so the normal step event, like I said, begin step happens first and then step event and then end step event, that makes sense. However, whenever different objects are running their updating code in the same event, there still has to be an order in which they run their code, which oftentimes this really isn't gonna be a big deal. However, uh, let's say for example, that game maker chooses to run these three objects like this. And I think the order at which it runs the objects is based on uh, which one is in memory first. So probably which one was put in the room first or created first. There's no way for us to control that. So the idea is, let's say that as far as the single step event goes, this runs its code first, then our player runs their code, and then this one runs their code. Well, that means that by the time the player is running their step event, we don't really know how to compensate for any kind of like moving platform that we might be standing on because we can't be sure if we should be checking if a platform we were standing on has already moved or if it's about to move. So what I ultimately decided to do was to move all of the moving platforms platform code into the begin step event. That way, whenever in our player, we're checking for platform movement and things like that, we'll always know how to check for it. We can consistently know that any moving platform that we were standing on has already moved and done its code by the time that we start running the player's code. Because again, if they moved more like this, where this happens first, then the player, and then this one, these two platforms are moving in identical ways. However, by the time the player runs their code, if both of these are moving upwards, then by the time the player runs their code, the platform that already did their movement will look like this compared to the player and the one that hasn't yet will look like this. So again, we just don't know how to compensate for it. So separating them out into their own different parts of the step event means that we'll always know that both of these will end up like this. And then we can do some stuff in our player to think, okay, well, we've been moved into a platform, so move me out of the platform or get me back on top of it or whatever. That's just the method I decided to go with. This could also be achieved by putting all the moving platform code in the end step event probably, but uh, I decided to build my 
my system based on the begin step event for this stuff. But yeah, that's the idea. So my solution, instead of doing code for moving platforms in the step event, I'm gonna change this event and I like to do it all in the begin step event. So first, let's just program in working movement for this semi-solid platform. So I'm gonna right click on my step event and I'm gonna to go to inherit event because I want to keep the X and Y speeds. And let's just do what I said, let's, let's start weird. Let's start with an odd movement so that way we just know everything's working. Let's make it travel in a circle. And that's pretty easy to do actually. It sounds like it might be complicated, but not really. So first we need a direction and that's gonna be the angle that it is relative of you know this, this circle, like what angle on this 360 degree circle should the wall be at. So direction, and we can just start that at zero. Uh, we're gonna say rot speed for rotation speed. And this is just gonna be how fast it completes the circle, right? So how quick does it move in the circle? And an easy way to do that, we can take 360 degrees of our circle and we can divide it by uh, a certain number of frames that we want it to happen. So game runs at 60 FPS, so I can say, 180 frames, right? So that means it'll take three seconds for it to go all the way in a circle. Easy. And the last thing we want is uh, the radius of our movement, right? So radius, we'll say equals uh, 32 pixels. And that radius is just going to be the distance at which, you know, this thing is from the, the center of its invisible circle. So if it's 32, it'll probably look like the movement's going to be like around this size. I would say copy my numbers exactly for now, because again, this is just for testing. So let's go to the begin step and work on our code. So move in a circle. So this is easy. First, we can just add the speed to our direction. So that'll be changing our angle constantly. Then we can get our target position. So where do we want to be? So I'm gonna make a local variable called var target x. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be equal to our x start, which is a built-in variable. Once you place something in a room, it gets an x start, which means means for here, this X start will be 216 once the game starts. And that, that'll never change. It'll always be 216 as long as I put it there. So then we're gonna do X start plus length dir underscore X. So this is a function where you can input a length or a distance and a direction. And with length dir X and a length dir Y, it will tell you that points distance on a graph from a zero, zero coordinate. Like for example, you see on screen right now, it basically just helps us return values that will get us a point on a circle that is a certain angle and a certain distance away from the origin. So the length here is going to be that radius and our direction is going to be our direction, obviously. And target Y is going to be uh, exactly the same, basically. So it's gonna be our Y start plus our length direction Y of our radius and our direction. And finally, we want to get our X speed and Y speed. And here's how we're gonna do this. This is really easy. I'm gonna say my X speed equals my target X minus my current X position. So this will just get us the distance that we're trying to move to, you know, where we are now and where we want to be. So if, for example, we're, uh, we want to be moving to the right, say our target X is at 210 pixels and our current X is at 205 pixels, that would be 210 minus 205. So that means our X speed should be positive five, which makes sense, right? If we added five pixels to our X coordinate, we would get to our target X. And that compensates for both directions. If our target X was to the left of our regular X, so if our target X was at 205 and our current X was at 210, that would be 205 minus 210. So we would get negative five pixels. So anytime you wanna calculate any kind of you know weird, oh my God, any kind of weird movement, um, again, like moving in this circle, or if you just, I don't know, want your platform to move crazy and be weird. Uh, you can always reverse engineer an X speed and a Y speed, literally just by figuring out where you want it to be. And then you can just subtract your current coordinates from it. And so now we can just move. We can just put it where we want it to be. And that's great. We have a very accurate X and Y speed because our X and Y speed are going to be very, very important for all of the stuff that we're gonna do with interacting with it with our player. But for now, we can just test this. So I have one in here. And if I run the game, I'm also gonna clear out all this. We know, we know our slopes work, They're getting very busy in here. So here we go. Okay, great. It's just a circular moving platform. That's a good speed. Uh, we can't do anything with it yet, but now we have the movement down and hopefully your movement should look like this. If it doesn't, just go back and compare your code and make sure it's the same because I think this thing is pretty gosh darn good for testing because it moves in literally every single direction. When it comes to moving platforms, horizontal moving platforms are much easier to figure out than vertical moving platforms. Um, and even if you do figure out vertical moving platforms, sometimes that code does not behave for kind of strange movements or movements that happen at strange speeds. So. 
Uh, this is just gonna be a, a great way to test what we're doing. So again, make sure its parent is the semi-solid wall. Make sure your semi-solid wall has an X speed and a Y speed in its create event. And let's just go ahead and put the, I guess we can go ahead and put a regular one of these over here for whenever we eventually test it, right? So there we go. Whew, okay, let's get working folks. So first let's go to our create event and go to the bottom. We're gonna make a thing called moving platforms. And we're going to make a variable called my floor plat and set it equal to no one first. It just means that it's not storing any data. So I mentioned this earlier, we're gonna want to store the floor platform that we're standing on, which is what we're gonna do for here. It's going to be essential for moving platforms and very, very helpful for even static semi-solid platforms. You can also make a variable called move plat x speed and set that equal to zero. And that'll be us tracking how fast horizontally our moving platform is moving. Now you might wonder why I'm not going to include a Y speed one with this, but you'll see by having access to this floor platform, we can basically just tell our player to stay on top of it. Technically, no matter what speed it's moving at, or at least we can decide how fast it should be able to go while our player is standing on it. But the point is, is it kind of just completely circumnavigates the need for a move plat Y speed. So you'll see as we move on. So step event, time. So we are going to go down to our Y movement and our Y collisions. So Y collision and movement. This, close this. Uh, I'm also going to zoom out one time because I have a feeling this is going to get very annoying for me to look at. Hopefully it's still nice and zoomed in enough for you guys. But the point is our downwards Y collision code, we're basically going to have to uproot it and change everything. This is going to be the bulk of what we're doing here. So unfortunately, I'm just going to kiss this bad boy goodbye. No more downwards collisions for us for right now. So I'm going to make some space. So obviously we're just redoing our downwards collisions. Uh, however, calling them downwards collisions won't entirely be accurate at this point because we're not only going to do it while we're moving downwards because of the way moving platforms work right a, a fast moving platform your player can be jumping upwards and before your player starts descending a fast moving platform can come up and catch the player right and at that point that's not a downwards collision that's just what i would call a floor y collision so it doesn't necessarily have to be moving downwards it's basically just the floor the floor can come up and meet you nowadays it's amazing what technology can do so i'm going to say check for solid and semi-solid platforms under me and I mentioned in this series before, but you know, this is, this is a pretty involved collision system that took a lot of testing on my part and uh, even uh, rebuilding it a couple times in different ways. So all of this is pretty specific, but I'm going to walk through all the reasoning for it. So first, we're not just going to use our regular Y speed, okay? Um, because we're checking below us, we want to check at what's going to be lower, where the current bottom of our player is or if it's going to be lower. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say local variable called clamp Y speed. Um, and I'm not actually gonna use the clamp variable, but it's the same principle. I'm going to use a function called max, which you can pass in any number of variables or numbers you want into it, and it will return whichever one is the highest. So I'm gonna say either zero or my Y speed. And this is what we're gonna be using for the most part for checking for our floors. Because like I said, say our player is jumping upwards and moving upwards at negative four pixels per second. Since what we're doing is we're checking for stuff that's under us, things that could be coming up to us, we don't want to leave anything out that may be in that four pixel space that we would be checking up. So we only want to check basically at where the player is or if the player is intending to be lower currently. And again, hopefully that will become more clear why as we move on. But, but basically, even though we're not limiting this collision check to while the player is moving downwards, we still only want to check a downwards moving speed. It it makes sure that we are going to be getting data from all the moving platforms that are directly below us. Because basically we'll always be, in addition to our Y speed, be checking one pixel down, uh, like we did before with you know checking for a floor platform and setting our set on ground. And we can't check a single pixel below us if say we're jumping upwards and we're adding the Y speed to the check. And so now below us is no longer a platform. So that's sort of the reasoning behind that. Again, like I said, this is all gonna get a little touchy, but hopefully you're keeping with me. Now, like I said, we want to get information from all of these instances that we're touching, all the semi-solid platforms and all of the solid walls.
So there is a function called instance place list. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It is instance place, but it will give us a list of all of the stuff that we're running into that we ask it to check. So if you look down here, we got an X, a Y, and an object, just like place meeting and instance place. And then it takes a list. So uh, we have to tell it to write to a certain list that we create. And then uh, whether or not that list is ordered, I can't remember what the reasoning of the ordering is. Uh, it might be based on creation order or some form of distance. I don't know. Um, it's not really important since we're just going to be looping through all of them anyways. So we are going to use this function. Like I said, it needs a list for us to write it to. So to do that, let's uh, create a local variable var list. And this is going to be ds list create. And uh, a ds list is basically, it's a data structure and it just is a list of data that we can write to and we can add things to. It's kind of similar to an array, except data structures actually use memory. So it's important to get rid of a data structure when you're done using it, which we will do and I'll show you how to do because otherwise it can cause a memory leak, which can slow down your game eventually and crash it. But it's very similar to an array where it's just a list where you can put things in and then you can access them and check them. So I'll just go out here, create a DS list to store all of the objects we run into. So cool, very cool. And one more thing that you might notice that is a little bit different is because we're gonna look for solid walls and semi-solid walls, which are two different kinds of objects. Wait a minute, here we go. Two different kinds of objects, uh, a wall and a semi-solid wall. Now, a semi-solid moving platform is a child of a semi-solid wall. So if we check for all semi-solid walls, it'll also check for these. However, this is totally separate from these two. So how do we check for both of them? Well, pretty easily actually. Instead of just passing in an object here, we can pass in an array of objects that we define. So it will just check for multiple different objects that we want to. So for example, I could do this. I could say var array equals array create. I'll create it a uh, zero size. So it's an empty array right now. And then I'll use the function array push. We can pass in the array we want to add values to or push values onto. And then we can add any values we want to to add to it. So I can add the object wall and object semi-solid wall. And so uh, again, it just creates an empty empty array and array push is just an easy way of doing this array zero equals a wall and array one equals O semi-solid wall. Um, that's the same thing. It's just an easy function that does it really quickly for us and sorts it by itself. So instead of just passing in object wall or object semi-solid wall, we can check for both by just passing in that array. So now I can say do the actual check and add objects to list. So what we want to do is check our current X position and the Y is where we get a little bit funky. So first of all, like I said, we're always going to be checking below our feet, at least one pick because even if our Y speed isn't moving at all, we still want to know what's directly below us. So first we're getting our Y position plus one. That's just a given. Then we're going to be checking with our clamp Y speed, right? So we're checking with our Y speed, but basically just only checking downward speeds. We already talked about that. And then there's one last thing we need to consider. So remember, we're running this in the step event and our moving platforms are moving in the begin step event, right? So that's gonna be important for a couple things for a few different reasons. But the idea is, you know, this one moves in a circle, but let's just say, cause again, this can technically move, it's moving up and down the entire time, right? This could technically be the case. By the time the player is running their code, if this thing is moving, you know, relatively fast, by the time the player starts checking for it, if the player was standing on this, their Y speed is zero right now. This thing could be three pixels below, even though the player is supposed Supposed to be standing on it right by the end of this frame we would want the player to be down on top of it but again there's there's going to be that gap in time there's the begin step and then we get the step event and so in our step event we're going to try and compensate for this so basically how fast should the player be following a platform that's moving downwards right and let's think of it this way our terminal velocity for our player i believe is four let me see right four four pixels per second so if whenever free falling in the air the player can't fall faster than four Four pixels at a time, it would make sense that if for some reason there was a moving platform that moved down five pixels, it would outpace how fast the player could fall down, right? However, if it only moved down four pixels or it moved down three pixels, the player should be able to keep up with it. So basically, we also want to check down plus our terminal velocity. 
in case, for example, this platform that we are supposed to be standing on has moved down like three pixels in speed. And we just wanna make sure that we can keep up with it. But if it moved faster than our terminal velocity, like five, that's whenever the platform can move out from below us and it'll just let us start free falling. I think that makes a lot of sense, but I'm just explaining that that's the logic behind this, right? So if you didn't want that to be the case, if you wanted the player to be able to just stick to the platform at all times, you could make a separate variable called, let's say, move plat maximum y speed. And you could say, I don't really care what the terminal velocity is. Uh, I want the player to be able to move eight pixels at a time with this, which eight is probably so much faster than you think it is. Eight is, in, is incredibly fast. But if that's what you wanted and you thought maybe you might have moving platforms that fast in your game for some reason, then instead of using terminal velocity, you could put that there. And I could even put that here. And since I've set it below my terminal velocity, I could just set that there right and this would functionally be the same thing and you know what? i suppose i'll just keep that there in case that's what you want and i'll just comment this out and explain this and how fast can the player follow a downwards moving platform now you could have these you know be different values you could also have this be a lower value even but i think in terms of feel it just works and it makes a lot of sense uh using the terminal velocity variable but that's what this is so that's where we're checking we are checking our array right we're checking for wall and semi-solid wall we're going to add all of that to our ds list and whether or not it's ordered doesn't matter so i'm just going to tell it it doesn't have to do that so false it doesn't matter we're going to be looping through all of them and that's pretty much that so now we want to loop through the colliding instances and only return return one if its top is below the player so we're actually going to be adding a lot of stuff to this just got more space to it again but here we go so we're going to set up a for loop here and something that you need for a loop is how many times you want it to loop or it needs some kind of termination right uh, so it doesn't loop forever and freeze your game and the way for loops work is we can tell it how many times we want it to do it essentially. And for that, we only want to do a loop for the amount of instances that we get returned here. Thankfully, this function actually returns the size of the list it has. So we can just do this. We can set this equal to var list size equals this. And so this function will still play out normally, but now we will save in this local variable the number of instances we've actually run into, even if it's just zero. So now let's set up our for loop. And a for loop looks like this so four it's got three parts var i equals zero so establishing that the local variable i equals zero we can say as long as i is less than our list size then we will do i plus plus which means plus one and what that means is starting with i equals zero as long as i is less than our list size we'll run all the code that we put in this loop and then we'll add one to i this makes accessing information from things like arrays or lists very very easy because I I can do something like this var list inst so our list instance equals list i like that and this is how you access data from a ds list uh, an array if it was an array it would look like you know this with a ds list you add the uh whatever that thing's called in a space and that's how you do it so we're creating this list here and then we're writing all of these colliding instances into it right here and now we're looping through it and every time we loop through we're getting a specific wall object so if we have five objects there we're getting each one and then looping back until we've gone through all of them so get an instance of o wall or o semi solid wall from the list that's what this is there's also a function for this called ds list find value and you can just type in what list you want to find and the position in the list that you want it uh, and this is the exact same thing as doing list i oops list i like that those mean the exact same thing so here's the part I got some splaining to do. And in fact, I am gonna try and simplify it. So let's just start here. Let's say return a solid wall or any semi-solid walls that are below the player. So let's say if our list instance dot object index is equal to O wall or object is ancestor, we're gonna put our list instances object index if that is a child of object wall. So uh, I'll explain this first. Hopefully the naming should make it pretty clear it's happening, but the object index basically means if my list instance is say this wall on the ground right here and we're getting this instance index this object's 
object index is o wall. However, if I had some other wall object that was just a child of object wall, so for example, if uh, say there was like a trash can object I had, or like a, a pipe object or something that the player could stand on, and it was called o, o pipe, and it was a child of the wall, so it was a solid thing, its object index would not be object wall, its object index would be object pipe. So since we want to check for all walls, we're checking if this thing's object index is the wall, or if its object index is an ancestor of the wall object. This is basically just a way that we can check for if this thing is a solid wall object. Uh, and in my experience, you have to pass in object index here. And obviously, uh, object wall is not an ancestor of object wall. So uh, I'm doing both checks here just to check if it is a solid wall. And then we can say or. So now if we get to this check down here, again, we now know that the object that we're looping through is not a wall or a child of the wall. So it has to be semi-solid, which means that now we only want to include this object as an actual contender as long as its top is below the player's bottom. And we have a built-in variable for that. It's called bbox bottom. So that's the bottom of the player's mask index. Now, uh, I've found that it works a little bit better if we floor this variable, which flooring is basically, it's a rounding, but just down. So it just cuts off a decimal point. So it's basically returning uh, the highest that this collision mask pixel is at. And so as long as the bottom of our player's mask is less than or equal to, and here we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna wrap this up in a seal, which is the opposite of flooring. It's just rounding up no matter what the decimal point is. And this is going to be our list instances, bounding box top, right? So the top of it. But remember any walls or semi-solid walls that have been moving all did that in the begin step event. So they've already moved. So we just wanna check what they were like at the beginning of this game frame. So from its bounding box top, we're going to subtract its Y speed, right? So at at the beginning of the game frame, where was this thing's bounding box top? And that's why having all this done in the step event, or basically just having them done at a specific time to where we know that all of the moving walls are moving before the player is actually running any code, it means that this will work 100% of the time because there should be no weird instances of any walls accidentally using their movement code after the player. Uh, and again, like the fact that we're sealing it and we're just making sure it's the lowest downwards possible the pixel could be by rounding up any decimal point. Again, it's just something that I've noticed just kind of helps with this, just like the floor variable here. But again, so we're looping through all of the instances that we collided with, all the objects that could be a floor below us. And we're basically saying if it's a solid wall, then yeah, let's it's going to be a contender for the floor platform. Or if it's a semi-solid platform, but at the beginning of this game frame, its bounding box top was lower or equal to our bounding box bottom, which means that we should be able to collide with it. And so now we can actually set our my floor platform variable, right? Because now we all we have to do is return the highest wall object. I'm gonna put highest in quotation and you'll see why. So again, we're trying to update my floor platform, the variable. So first of all, let's just say if uh, not instance exists my floor plat, then we can set my floor plat to be the current list instance, which is going to either be a solid wall or a semi-solid that is below us. So just if we don't have a floor platform, just go ahead and set it to the first one that we find because any uh, list instance that gets here is going to be acceptable for our floor platform. So that's the first one. But now that after that, we'll ensure that we actually have a floor platform, we can start comparing it if we have any more to check for. So we can say, if not instance exists, floor platform, then set it, or we can do this. So let's take our comparing instance. So our list instance, if it's bounding box top plus it's Y speed. So basically we're gonna be including the direction this is headed in. So say for example, our Y speed is you know negative. So the floor platform is going upwards. So we're trying to compare like by the next frame, the top of this wall, where is it gonna be? Is it gonna be really high up? And is it going to be higher than my current floor platforms bounding box top plus its Y speed, right? Because next frame, let's say that my floor platform is, let's visualize it. We'll say that, you know, this is my current floor platform and here's another moving wall above it. Let's say this one's moving up at one pixel per second. So next frame, it's gonna be here. But let's say this one is moving up at one, two, three pixels per second. So by the next frame, it's actually gonna be higher 
than this purple one. Currently, if we're just checking for whichever one has the highest bounding box top, it's gonna ultimately end up being the purple one. However, we wanna, we wanna look to the future. We want platforms to pick us up coming from under. So we now can know that, well, it's actually the blue one that we wanna be standing on top of next. So that's basically what we're doing there. That also compensates for something like, you know, if these two are together, like this, you know, and we're checking below us, this one's speed, you know, could be going down positive two, and this one could be going up positive one. And if that's the case, at the next frame, we know that we probably just wanna go ahead and snap to the blue one and save the blue one as our floor platform. So that's basically what we're doing there. And lastly, I'm just gonna add one more and say, if the list instances bounding box top plus its Y speed is less than or equal to my current bounding box bottom, which basically just means if it's ultimately gonna end up being above the bottom of me, even though currently it's below me, then it should probably just pick me up also. Um, and I've noticed that this line was kind of the one that added that one last little bit of not letting any platforms squeeze by in some uh, you know very specific cases where maybe a semi-solid platform would kind of get left behind or something like that, so. Right, uh, oh, and before we do anything else, something I've just realized, we're checking for Y speeds here for all of these objects, including our object walls, but we never actually gave our object wall the uh, X speed and Y speed, so let's do that really quick. Just add X speed equals zero and Y speed equals zero to our object wall. Like I said, we're, we're checking for everything, but obviously when we start doing solid moving walls, we'll just make a child object for that, but for now, it'll need this data or it'll crash because it's going to look for a Y speed that the wall doesn't have so so yeah so to the best of our ability we've gotten a floor platform that we should be standing on including semi-solid platforms now we haven't actually done the collision yet we've just gotten what object we basically want to be using so first things first very very important we're done with our loop but lastly we need to go outside of it and destroy the ds list to avoid a memory leak because now we're done with it so we can just call ds list destroy and we can pass in our list we don't need it anymore. We got what we needed, the floor platform. Great. And so before we move on to actually moving ourselves onto our floor platform for good, let's do one last check to make sure the floor platform is actually below us. This may sound a little bit weird, but let's just do it and then I'll talk about it for a second. So first, we just want to say if we think we have a floor platform, however, if there's not a collision with that platformer directly below us, so let's go with our X position, our Y position plus our uh, move plat max Y speed, right? Or terminal velocity, which is what I have this set to. Remember, this is the, the fastest we can fall downwards. Um, if there isn't one that's actually directly below us, again, we're checking for our floor platform. Um, so if it's not actually below us, then we can just set my floor plat back to be no one, you know, just forget whatever object we thought we had. And this may sound weird, but basically the purpose for this is, this is where, for the most part, we're going to intend to forget our floor platform. So we can get a floor platform here, and if we get one right here, then that's great. Everything works fine. However, uh, if we go through our step event and then come back around and loop back around to this, and we did have a floor platform before, but maybe in our X movement, we walked off of it. Um, we're not resetting this variable anywhere yet. And this is where we're gonna do that. So basically if it's moved out and it's going too fast below us, or if we're just literally not even, you know, horizontally standing on top of it anymore at all, then let's just forget it. And the reason we wanna do that is because now we want to land on the ground platform if there is one. So if instance exists, my floor plat, then we can do some stuff. And this is gonna look pretty familiar. So let's scoot up to our wall precisely. We can uh, get a sub pixel value again if we want. I'm gonna do 0.5 again. And so we can say while we are not place meeting our X and our Y plus our sub pixel, because again, the way we've calculated this, you know, we know that we're only gonna have a floor platform um, if we're not kind of intentionally jumping off of one. So if we're not right on top of our floor platform and we're not running into a wall, so if we're not place meeting an object wall, then let's move our Y down the, uh, the sub pixel amount. Yo, it's me back with another post-production explanation of something that I didn't like the way I did it in the video. Okay, so the reason we have the not place meeting X, Y object wall right here is because essentially of a scenario like this. We've gotten our my floor platform. We've determined that it's this semi-solid platform and it's the kind that moves downwards. Uh, and then we get to this point. 
uh, where we're moving down into a solid wall or something. Now, our uh, finding the my floor platform code is pretty smart, or I should say at least pretty intricate, and we do a lot of checks. And in fact, we even add a little bit more to it to make it a little bit tighter. However, I found that in very rare circumstances, especially when it comes to eventually adding moving semi-solid pla- or moving solid platforms, where if this is a moving solid platform, it could be moving up and they could be moving at mismatched speeds, you know, this one compared to this one. And maybe every so often the character might favor this semi-solid over the solid. And for like a single frame, we'll still be registering this as it's my floor platform and then do our precise code that gets us down here and clips us into a wall. This basically stops us from doing that. Like I said, while I was testing, uh, this actually didn't really seem to be much of an issue in gameplay at all. Like it would normally just happen for like a frame. It would be basically imperceptible and it wouldn't do anything like eating inputs or anything like that. But, um, you know, while we have our code here and while we're doing it, I just want to make sure that the player can never clip into solid walls. Unless, of course, you know, you intentionally put a level down where, say, this is a moving solid wall and the player can stand here and get crushed by it, like, say, a Sonic game or a, like a Thwomp type enemy in a Mario game or something like that. Um, and if that's the case, if you do ultimately want to include those kind of mechanics, I've set up this series to where the player should behave properly, and I've done my best to completely eliminate any circumstances where the player might clip into a wall, even for just a single frame when it just doesn't need to happen, right? So the long and short of it is that's what that check is for. It's just something that I noticed helped smooth out the collision system a little bit. I'm sure you've noticed, and you will continue to notice in this video, there's a lot of things that basically just serve to smooth out a tiny little issue I was noticing if I couldn't get to the uh, the full root of the problem. But I don't really think this is a bad fix, especially considering I noticed that uh, it, it seems to have completely gotten rid of that issue done a lot of testing on it. So yeah, that's basically the idea behind it. So let's move on. But uh, so the point is we're moving precisely up to our floor platform. And now here's a funky one. I'm going to say, make sure we don't end up below the top of a semi-solid. And this is kind of a, this is going to be kind of like the reverse of what we just did. And I'll explain why. Hold on. If my floor plat dot object index is equal to object semi-solid wall or object is ancestor. And we're going to check uh, the object index of our floor platform. We're going to check if it's an ancestor of semi-solid wall again, just like we did up there. This is how we test and make sure that it is some form of a semi-solid wall in case we do get in there we're gonna squeak ourselves back out so if we are touching our floor platform at this point it basically means uh, our bottom is not actually above the top of our floor platform anymore and so then we're just gonna do the opposite y minus equals sub pixel and that's important because what we're going to do next is floor the y variable like this y equals floor y now this may look really weird to you uh and yeah it's a little weird for sure but uh this is mostly to fix the issue of uh i'm sure you've noticed while testing your game that a lot of times especially if you're running your game at a higher resolution than your actual art is at like i've been doing and chances are you have been doing even if you aren't sure um why the player can sometimes either get a tiny little gap between their feet and the ground, or sometimes it seems like they're like a quarter of a pixel too far into the ground or something like that. And this basically just stops that from happening. And just uh, this is basically just a very safe, super precise collision with the floor platform, uh, including semi-solids. Again, it's very touchy, very touchy. And, and probably the way I've done this might seem stupid. And it might be. Uh, and for that, I'm sorry. But I have found that this has given me really good results with making sure the player is right on the ground while also never clipping past a semi-solid wall while keeping the collisions super, super tight. So again, I've just found that this works. And so that's gonna be it. And finally, we finish our uh, collision with the ground, right? We set our Y speed to zero. Finally, the collision happens. And just like last time, we set our on-ground variable uh, to be true because we're on the ground. And we have a floor platform now. And then after that, of course, we move. Okay, so uh, that's a lot. And like I said, we still got a little bit more to do right here uh, just because I wanted to talk about my floor platform first. So before we can test anything, an issue I can tell you we're gonna have right now is we will not be able to jump. Why is that? Uh, well, a couple reasons. Basically, a few of these things are sort of uh, magnetizing the player to the ground and then keeping the player stuck to the ground. 
right? And we do all that to make sure our semi-solid walls work whenever we move them in weird ways. More than anything, that's that's kind of the reason we do that. Uh, and to sort of round out our position, like I was talking about, and just make it just just, mwah, just really, really nice looking and nice feeling whenever we're playing. However, we don't have anything to like stop the magnetizing to happen right now. So if we ran our game, we wouldn't be able to jump. First things first, the easiest thing about it is if we have a floor platform, then we're, we're going to get magnetized to it right here, right? We're going to get scooted up to it precisely. So, and the only time we forget the floor platform is if we're basically not standing on one, if we like walked off the edge or something like that, or if it moved out from below us. But if we manually jump or something like that, we also kind of want to forget our floor platform. Remember, it's the same reason why whenever we press the jump button up here, we set our on ground to being false because we know that once we jump, as far as the game is concerned, we're not on the ground anymore. But even if we don't get much off the ground, the idea is we're now in the off the ground state. So we can just open that up. And anytime we set our on ground to be false, uh, we can also set our my floor plat to be no one. We can reset that, right? Because if we're not on the ground, then we don't have a floor platform, or at least we should forget the one that's right below us. That makes sense to me. So step one, very important, add that in. And since we made this a function, which is part of the reason we did it in the first place, uh, that's already taken care of anywhere that we decide to tell the game to let us get off the ground. So so we are going to add, we're going to add one more little group here. Look at this. We got ourselves a nice little pyramid going. So one more little group here. I'm just going to call this stop magnetism. Or uh, I guess at this point, it's the first thing we're checking. We're going to say avoid magnetism, right? So we're going to add two things here. In a, we're going to add some parentheses and we're going to say if our uh, list instances y speed is either less than or equal to our y speed, or we already have a my floor platform. So my instance exists floor platform. What what does this do? What is this doing? So let's look at just this first part. So if the floor platform's y speed is less than or equal to mine. So let's go to our room and and talk about this really quick. This might be a little tough to explain because it's going to take a lot of uh, a few different examples. But basically, if our player is still or falling downward, so we'll say at the top of a jump arc, and then we start falling. So our Y speed becomes greater than zero and we're going down. That basically just means as long as this platform is not going down faster than our player is, then we can latch onto it, which that makes sense. But it also means if our player is jumping upwards and say has a current speed of negative five, and this thing is also going up, but it only has a speed of negative four, then the player won't magnetize to it because the player is outpacing it even though it still falls in the range of the player checking for it because of this variable here, our, uh, our move plat maximum XY speed that we're checking to. Wow, that was a mouthful. Um, because of this, right, we're, we're checking down that extra. Again, I consider it the terminal velocity. So basically, you know, we can fall off of platforms that are falling too fast below us. But because we're always checking below us for that, if the player is moving upwards faster than this platform, whether this platform is moving upwards but slower, not moving at all, or going downwards, since this thing is not moving upwards as fast as the player, then we avoid it getting lumped in with this variable, which by the way is also the reason we're not using our um, our clamp Y speed variable here because we want to be able to check for the upwards jumping movement, which this eliminates. Or if we already have a platform, because if we are standing on a platform that is moving downwards, you know, we're going down and the platform we're standing on is moving down. They are going down together. Uh, say if it's going down at, you know, two pixels per frame, the player's Y speed is actually zero because the player is standing on solid ground. But this thing's speed is positive two. So basically, we don't want to omit looking for platforms that are moving down if we know that we're already standing on something. That's, that's kind of the difference here. This is mostly here to avoid if we are jumping, don't magnetize us to something. But if we're already on the ground, then this code doesn't really matter. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then we're just gonna add one more thing, one more little parenthesis thing. And like I said, it, that this kind of attempts to avoid strange contact with the, you know, magnetizing us down while we're jumping up. Um, there's something else we're gonna do like that too. And so let's do our second thing here. We're gonna add our parentheses. First, we're simply gonna say, if our lists instance y speed is greater than zero, or if place meeting our x, our y plus one, plus our clamp y speed with the list instance. So what is this doing? Well, remember, like I said, this this line is also to kind of circumnavigate the, the magnetism of this line. And one of the problems that we're having with jumping and a little weird, some other, 
collision oddities that uh, would be in the code otherwise is because we're checking downwards for our maximum Y speed, you know, so a platform basically can't shoot out from below us even if it's not going fast enough. But we only basically really want to do that check uh, if that platform is moving downwards. So it's Y speed is greater than zero, right? Otherwise, if it's not moving downwards, this check doesn't really need to happen. So basically, we're just removing it again. So any anything that's not moving downwards, we're just going to check without that little terminal velocity maximum Y speed check in there. So that was the bulk of what we're looking at. All this stuff right here. And uh, I think we should be ready to test it. So let's test it. So, oh, well, I already set mine there. So, yep, I'm on a semi-solid platform. I can move past it. The depth is kind of weird. I might want to change that, but yeah, look at this. Look at that. This is all working fabulously. And let's check it on this. Now, yeah, our X speed won't follow it because we haven't done the X speed yet. But for the most part, we're looking all right. Our movement when we go up and down is looking a little jittery, right? And that's partly because we uh, are flooring our Y variable constantly. So yet again, there is more to do. We are not totally done, but you should be able to jump on this at any speed, walk off it, do all this kind of stuff, and it should be great. So yeah, the semi-solids are working and the moving platforms are mostly working kind of so you know again that was a lot of code to do the the problem is is that you know we didn't get to test it a lot you know here's here's the first part of it you can pause that look at that if you want to here's the rest of it pause that if you want save it do something with it um if you're getting some problem if it's not looking like mine obviously we have problems that's you know that's no surprise but if you can't stand on the semi-solid platforms and stuff like that uh just check your code again this is definitely the toughest part by far even though we're not done and there's still more stuff to do the rest of it is going to be a lot easier because it's basically just going to be building on what we did and it, you know there aren't going to be as many shouldn't be as many new concepts <laughs> things like that so so yeah um what i'm going to do really quick is in my semi-solid wall i'm going to set the depth to like negative uh negative 10 for the semi-solid walls and i'm going to set my player's depth uh to be like negative 30 so my player shows up on top just so testing doesn't look quite as weird there we go Nice. Very, very nice. So yeah, not done. Um, but the hard part's over. I'm actually hugely relieved getting through that part myself. I promise it's trying for me as well. But uh, that being said, I'm going to take a break for a second. So see ya. Oh yeah. And uh, don't worry. I'm also going to show you how you can like hold the down button and jump back down through the semi-solid platforms, uh, which is in most games. In fact, most of the touchiness of this collision system comes from the fact that, uh, or the specificities comes from the fact that I wanted to add in the feature to be able to press the down button and jump through them. That was more annoying than I thought it would be. Anyways, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from my little break. It's been uh it's been three days. Look, it was late. I went to bed and then the last two days I had some other stuff I wanted to do. All right. Calm down. Let's let's be let's be chill here. So what have we got? What have we got going on here, huh? We uh we don't have our horizontal speeds working. Our Y snapping is not the same. Sorry I'm repeating all this. I just have to fresh myself. And we can't fall down through our platforms intentionally, right? That that's where we've left off here. We're gonna do the falling through the platforms last, because that's the easiest and this is the most logical place to continue on from here our uh our up and down let's let's do the y snapping before we do the uh, horizontal speed because that's also very easy like i said i'm very excited we ended at the hardest part in the series so everything else is smooth sailing step event here we go so we're gonna go under our y movement code and i'm gonna add a section and i'm gonna call this final moving platform collisions and movement. So first I'm gonna call this next section, why snap myself to my floor platform. Very cool. So, you know, we saw that kind of jittery movement of our player uh, getting snapped to 
whenever going up and down on the moving platform. And that's because we floor the Y variable here. And I already explained the reason that we're doing this is to basically just really smooth out that precise collision so the player looks really good and feels really good whenever they're standing still, standing on the ground somewhere. But obviously if the ground is moving or if the ground is, you know, off, then we want to, uh, you know, we want to include the, the sub pixels in there. So rounding or flooring the variable here looks and feels really good for non-moving walls and non-moving platforms. But for moving ones, let's just kind of snap ourselves to the wall. So we want to say if we have a floor platform, right? So if instance exists, my floor platform. And like I said, uh, we only need to do this for moving platforms, right? Static platforms are fine. So, and my move platforms, Y speed is not equal to zero. We can say snap myself to my floor platform if it's moving vertically. Now we can say snap to the top of the floor platform. And we're going to do two more checks. First, we're going to say if there is not a place meeting of our X position and where we want to put our Y, remember we're just snapping to the top of the floor platform. So the Y position we're going to check for is my floor platforms dot bounding box top and an object wall. So that's the first check, which basically means this helps for when our moving platform is carrying us downwards, right? So say for instance, uh, this is an up and down moving platform and it does this, it goes down into this wall and then back up. Uh, if we are going down and then all of a sudden we're down here, uh, we don't want to move the player to snap to the top of this because there is a solid wall in the way. Whenever we find our my uh, floor platform variable, whenever we find this variable up here, like we just did a minute ago, it's like I said, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. It pretty much always returns the the topmost of the walls, but uh, occasionally every now and then it might take one extra frame for it to realize which of these two actually is going to be the tallest. So we just don't want to have any instances of the player getting inside of the wall. A lot of this code is built with the idea of trying to make it basically impossible possible for the player to get clipped into a wall to any extent. Unless, of course, they get crushed by a solid moving platform moving into another one or a solid wall or something like that. And we'll go over that at the end. But so that's what this first check is doing is basically stopping that from happening. And then we also want to check and make sure that our my floor platform is reasonably below us still. So we can check for my floor platforms bounding box top to be greater than or equal to our bottom. So bounding box bottom. And we'll just say minus our, uh, what, what do we call it? Move plat max Y speed or terminal velocity or something. This is just a value that we have. You know, we've already explained what it does, but I'm just adding a, a pad upwards, you know, adding a couple frames to where basically we're just making sure that if there's anything that's moving, we want it to be, uh, you know, we don't want it to snap to the top of something if it's say, you know, say this is w what that variable is. If our wall is like above this, like up here for some reason, or say if it's up here, we don't want our player to snap all the way to the top. This is another kind of specific instance thing as well where uh, this sort of goes along with like getting crushed by eventually the solid moving platforms or whatever because our my floor platform code uh, it will return any solid wall object that the player is running into basically the solid wall object doesn't also need to technically be below the player and if there's a case again especially when it comes to moving solid platforms where say if we had a moving solid platform like this and our player was standing on the ground here and this was moving down uh if we moved into the player like this, the player might consider this the new floor platform just because they're colliding. And so we don't want the player to just snap up to it. We basically just don't really want the player to do anything in that scenario. I basically just want to make it to where the behavior is. The player just won't do anything. The player just won't be able to move until this thing gets out of the way. So we definitely don't want the player to snap up to the top of it or something like that. So continuing on, those are the reasons. That's why we're doing those two checks. And if both of those are cleared, then we can just set our Y coordinate to be the bounding box top of our my floor platform and that will basically unfloor our y variable so it's not choppy so let's see what that looks like let's run the game and stand on our one moving platform so oh uh, yes look at that smooth nice and smooth no more weird upwards moving choppiness to be had here i could also do this really quick i could uh i could just keep its x position in the same place this thing's you know not move it so just have it move up and down to show you now let's see now it just moves up and down look at that nice and smooth that's great and we can jump up into it and everything awesome that's what that does 
Whoa, it's me, back with another addendum. As you just saw, this code totally works. However, I realized one specific thing about it that could be slightly improved, and that's this. We're only snapping our Y coordinate to the bounding box top of our uh, our moving floor platform if its Y speed isn't zero, which, you know, that makes sense. But that also means if you had a moving platform or something and eventually that moving platform stops for some reason, if that moving platform's Y coordinate is not a nice round coordinate, like if it's, it's moving in sub pixels and stuff like that, then your player won't fully snap to it. It's not that noticeable, but uh, I don't like it. So let me show you that example really quick. So basically what I've done is uh, I've just added some variables to my moving platform and my semi-solid moving platform. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing you this. And it's basically what I've been doing uh, or what I just did, which was turning off the X speed if I only want it to move up and down, turning off the Y speed if I only want it to move left and right. And I just, I just turned them into variables. So this is the same exact thing, except I'm basically just telling it not to move at all. So as if this were a moving platform that eventually stopped for some reason. Uh, and then in the create event, I'm just adding half a pixel. And the reason I went through that kind of uh, annoying, stupid way to do that, and also part of the reason why I kind of overlooked this, is because in your room editor, you can't place things in subpixels. I can't put this at that coordinate. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure. Let's see. What if I said 0.5? Um, it let me do it, but there was no visual change. So uh, I'm just going to keep that there. But the point is, you can't drag and drop this thing on subpixels. It's it's locked to the grid. So, and this is way after we finished the series, so these are solid moving platforms. Uh, but again, none of these are actually going to be moving because I've told them not to, but they're all going to be half a pixel down. So here is what that looks like. So again, I'm, I'm looking fine on the regular ground, looking fine on the normal semi-solid platforms, but this is a moving one that's half a pixel down. Aha! There we go. And it's because this thing's Y speed is at zero, but it has stopped at a sub-pixel coordinate. So one thing you can do is whenever you set your moving platforms and stuff like that, see it's the same with this one, same with this one, it's gonna do the same thing for all of these. It's not gonna snap us down to it all the way. And really, the main reason that I was doing the uh, the Y speed check in the first place, so the main reason we were doing this check right here was basically just to say, only snap us to a my floor platform if it's a moving platform, right? Like I said earlier, our uh, non-moving platform, so over here we've got a wall, an object slope, object semi-solid wall. These are the non-moving versions of these platforms, even though they're the same. They have X speed and Y speed variables, they just don't move and stuff like that. So really, instead, we we could just check if our floor platform is either a object move plat or an object semi-solid move plat, right? Because nothing else should be moving. Oh, it's me cutting it again. It's like 2010 hit film Inception, which you could have watched four times in the time it took you to watch this video. Like I said, we're just gonna check and see if it's a moving platform or semi-solid moving platform. Obviously you don't have solid moving platforms yet, the regular ones. So I'm gonna put in the check for both right now, but just, you know, you just don't have to put in the check for the solid platforms right now because you don't have them. You can just put in the check for the semi-solid platforms when I do it. And then in the next video, whenever we're covering our solid moving platforms, I will chime back in again and I will remind you to add those into this part of the check because that's the only thing that this affects. How you doing? You holding up all right? Okay, good. Here we go. So we could get rid of this check or we could just also add to it. Now this is going to look kind of weird because otherwise it would be a very long, very long line. So, so we're going to say if there is a floor platform and its Y speed is not equal to zero, we can do this. We can go down on a line like this and we can say, or my floor plats object index is equal to a move plat. You, you see exactly what we're doing here. We're doing the same thing that we've done a few different times. At least I'm pretty positive we have. So we're saying if its object index is a moving platform or its object index is a child of the object moving platform, right? We've already done this. And then we're checking if it's uh, object index is a semi-solid moving plat or it's the ancestor of a semi-solid moving platform. So this is where the big parentheses is. So any of these five things can be true. So if there's a floor platform and any of these five things are true, which is really just three things, it's either it's moving up or down or it's an O move plat or it's an O semi-solid move plat, then we'll snap to its top. Looking back, uh, I really wish I had turned this into its own function. We should have made our own function with this, but uh, maybe I'll talk about that in another video or in a... Uh, in a series wrap-up video or something like that. But anyway, so now if I were to test the game, still looking good over here, still looking good regular. Uh, but now I am actually snapped on top of these moving platforms that have stopped. So nice. 
Yep, so works exactly the same as it did before. And uh, later on, we do the left and right speeds, obviously, but uh, we're totally snapping exactly how we should, looking pretty darn good. So yeah, that just solves that one tiny little issue that I realized could be uh, just an annoying little visual thing. So you're not going to see that code reflected in the rest of the series, but it's the same basic thing we just did. Okay, anyways, carry on. Awesome, that's what that does. And this is why at the beginning of the series, I think I mentioned this, I should have. I'm recording all these before I edit any of the videos. So uh, this code is part of the reason why when it comes to moving platforms, we don't want to have any moving platforms that are precisely shaped, that aren't just regular squares, right? We're not gonna be able to have any. With this code, it could be modified to do this, but with this code, we can't have something like this be a moving platform because the player wants to snap to the top of their bounding box, which for something like this slope will always be this top blue line right here. This is the top of the bounding box here. So you can imagine if the player was standing on the slope here, the player would go and snap up there. And the reason the player doesn't normally do that is because our oddly shaped collisions and our slopes and stuff like that, uh, we're not gonna have those be moving platforms. So that's why we're only doing this Y snapping if we're on top of some kind of moving platform. And that's why this check is pretty important. And like I mentioned, for example, in a game like Mario, where they probably wouldn't have a scenario where a solid wall can just crush the player uh, against another solid wall, this would be a limitation of avoiding, you know, in our game, we're not going to have these, we're not going to have precisely shaped moving solid walls. Like I said at the beginning, I, I will mention that. So you should not be surprised with me saying that right now and disappointed. There are ways to do it. It just becomes more complicated yet again. So maybe one day we'll get there. But for now, I think there's probably a chance you probably never even considered having some kind of weird shaped or slope or something moving platform or something like that, right? And regardless, maybe after you're done with this series, maybe you'll have learned enough to try and tackle that on your own. But this is what we have right now, okay? So now we're getting rid of this stuff. And with that being our only real limitation, we want to make other things work properly too. We want to squeeze out everything we can out of this system. At least that's the idea here for me. And you know, like I said, you know, to making sure that we don't go into wall or anything like that to test even further, uh, we can do this. Like I said, uh, go ahead and do this because th this will actually help you test this. In the step event of our circular semi-solid moving platform, I would say go ahead and just set this X speed to be zero. So we're just moving up and down for now. We'll do the horizontal speeds in, in a second, but here we go. Let's put a solid wall here so we can test going down into a solid wall. So if I stand on top of this, it should pick me up and... I should stop right there, and I never get clipped into the wall. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh-oh, what's happening there? Don't worry, we have a fix for this also. Uh, we always want this thing to pick us up, and I will explain what's happening here. Actually, I'll go ahead and mention it. What's happening here is actually our, uh, our downwards slope collision code. Basically, what's happening is we're getting picked up, you see, whenever we're not moving, but the way our downward slope collision code works is it wants to snap us down to walls, and it's because we're not checking for phase or uh, for one-way platforms also with that downwards check. We're, we'll get to it in a minute, I promise. But uh, this is a great example of the more complex you want to get with your collision code and have it do different things, uh, the more little things like this are going to show up and you're gonna have to be able to diagnose and figure those things out, which is why I hopefully did all of that for you. But, you know, just goes to show, once you start getting, uh, I, I said it was touchy, I said it was touchy. But anyways, uh, the idea is now whenever going downwards, we properly, you know, get to this wall and we're fine. And that will even work with something weirdly shaped like a slope, watch this, picks me up, right back down. Look at that, that's, it's gorgeous. And like I said, if we're moving, it doesn't do it. But for now, we've got what we wanted. But check this out, right? Uh, what's the other scenario here? The other scenario is there's a wall up here. I'm gonna do that, is that enough? That's enough. There's a wall here. So what happens here? Well, we get stuck in the wall and that's no good. Uh, this is like getting crushed. However, in this scenario, one of these things is meant to be a one-way platform that the player oftentimes can pass in front of and jump through and stuff like that. So maybe in a situation like this, you just want the player to be pushed back down through that semi-solid platform. So we can also go into our code right under this snapping code because we still only want to run this if we have a floor platform and it's moving us in some direction. So we can say this is for going up into a solid wall while on a semi-solid platform. So we already know we have a floor platform. We already know 
know its Y speed isn't zero, and we know that we're checking for being pushed up into a solid wall. So we can say if the uh, speed of our floor platform, so our floor platform's Y speed is less than zero, and if there's a wall in the way, so if place meeting our X and our Y plus the me floor, me floor platform, SpongeBob. Oh my God, this is one of those days where I can't type. Oh, it's gonna be a long one. Okay, so if we're moving upwards and there's a solid wall in the way, then we can run some code. And here's the place where we get pushed down through the semi-solid floor platform. So like before, we first need to check if our floor platform is a uh, is a semi-solid platform. So like this, you know, we've done this a couple times. We're checking the object index and if it's an ancestor of it, just to make sure it's some form of semi-solid platform. First, we get pushed down. So same, same looking code. So what we've checked for is if there's a collision with our X and where the floor platform is trying to take us by the next frame. So that's what we're checking for here. So, you know, this is essentially saying if in the next frame, our semi-solid floor platform is going to carry us up into a solid wall, we want to move ourselves down, which will effectively get us outside of this semi-solid platform like this it'll be trying to push us up Oops. so let's say its speed is two and remember we've already snapped ourselves to this new platform uh down here and we've already moved up with it with all of this code so again this is predicting next frame so if next frame this thing is going to move up two pixels it knows that if our player moves up two pixels this will happen and this is where we're checking for this wall object so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh while checking that position we're going to keep adding a a, a sub pixel amount so i'm gonna say var sub pixel and for this one i i did 0.25 which uh is a pretty small increment. I think uh, for some reason, I just found that this one worked for me. Maybe 0.5 would be fine. One, again, you know, might also be fine, but it might be a little big because I also want to make sure we didn't get pushed into a wall in some other direction. But, you know, anyway, so what we're doing is we're checking for this position. And if there is a collision in this position, then we're just gonna keep inching ourselves down until we're outside of where that wall would be, which is effectively gonna put us below our threshold for this moving platform. And we're going to tell the game to, uh, you know, Know, forget this platform basically so get pushed down through the semi-solid and then if we got pushed into a solid wall while going oh my gosh while going downwards push ourselves back out so uh this is just going to be the opposite of what we've done and what we've done a million times so if now we are inside of a wall object uh then we're gonna we're gonna get ourselves out by subtracting the uh, the sub pixel and then lastly, similar to flooring the Y variable here, I have found that rounding our Y coordinate here helps to make it feel precise again, and also helps us with some like single frame moments where we were detected inside of a wall. So anyways, we've now pushed ourselves below our semi-solid platform if it was trying to push us up into a solid platform, and we've made sure that we didn't get pushed back down into any kind of wall. And lastly, we can cancel the my floor plat variable because uh, this semi-solid platform that we now want to forget after being pushed up into the solid platform, uh, we don't want it to be our floor platform anymore. So uh, we can actually just do set on ground equals false, right? Because That's wrong. Equals false, right? Because we're not going to be on the ground anymore at that point, presumably. And uh, it, this also sets our MyFloor platform to nothing, all that stuff. So if I were to put a solid wall right here, let's see what happens. Okay, so if it tries to push me up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that something? It just works. Man, that makes me happy. Yeah, look at that. It's just good. It's just good, isn't it? All right. So there's gonna be a couple more scenarios like that that we're gonna factor into, but that is only gonna come into play once we add our solid moving platforms. So our Y movement is all good with the uh, the semi-solid moving platforms. And so now we can finally do our X movement on here, right? So I'm gonna say this is the X part of it. So that's the move plat X speed and collision there. So I like to do this above the Y. And remember, so, you know, we, we basically finished our Y stuff and we didn't use an extra variable like that. We, we just didn't need one the way we decided to calculate these things. But it will help us that we have our own dedicated move plat X speed variable, right? So let's get that. So first, I'm gonna say get the move plat X speed and we can do that. We can default it to being zero. And then after that, we can say, if we have a my floor platform, then we can just set our move plat X speed to 
be my floor platforms x speed, right? Makes sense. If we're standing on an object that is moving, then we'll just inherit its x speed directly. Very easy. And so now we can move with this variable, right? And this is just another collision. It's it's the same thing. Uh oh, <laughs> it's the same thing that we did with our regular x speed. We're just gonna check where we're trying to move for a solid wall object, right? And then if there is one, we can we can scoot up to the wall precisely. Okay, you know what? It, it literally is the same thing that we've been doing. So I just went ahead and finished it. This is basically the same thing as our regular x collisions but anyways let's test it and talk about it really quick so first i'm going to go into my circular moving platform thingy and just to test the horizontal movement i'm going to do the opposite here where i'm going to keep the regular movement for the y speed or the x speed and i'm going to set the y speed to zero so it'll just move back and forth like this and i'm going to put a wall uh right in the middle of it like this so first of all we should move on it good and yeah look at that a, a wall collision perfect looks great works on the other side yeah awesome so cool so last thing to check is i just want to turn the y speed and the x speed to be the totally regular thing on this and test the circular movement on here i mean look at that isn't that cool wow wowee that's cool i sure do like that a lot that's awesome and uh i'm just gonna i don't know put some walls around to do some just testing and running around and jumping on stuff it doesn't really so whatever i do it should be fine uh i snapped to that because again the movement so we're gonna fix that next and there's actually one more thing that i want to talk about with the movement of this that will not be apparent to you right now so uh let's just Ooh, that was close Okay, so first let's fix that one issue that I was talking about. And uh, that issue, I can actually show it without a moving platform. Uh, let me just do this. So I'm gonna put two, I'm gonna put some slope right here. So this is essentially the issue that's happening is we're running through these because our collision code, our downward slope moving collision code is, you know, kind of projecting that little ray down. And you see how, yeah, you see for that one little frame, my player snaps down to a, right below yeah right there um that's because whenever the player is moving side to side the player is always checking 45 degrees downwards for a solid platform to, to uh, snap to uh, that's how our downwards collisions work so the only thing we have to do is just we have to check if there's a semi-solid platform in the way and the reason we didn't do that earlier is because we didn't have our function that we made for that yet and the reason we didn't do that is because i wanted to talk about our code that we used for checking for semi-solid platforms first, obviously. So where do we need to go? We need to go up here to our uh, X collisions and right here going down slopes. So if our Y speed is greater than zero and there's not a wall in front of us, but there is a solid wall that same distance below us, then we can snap down. We also just wanna make sure that we're not running into a semi-solid platform there. So I actually think this is a very, very useful thing to sort of abstract out into its own function. So I'm gonna go back to the create event up by our custom functions, and I'm gonna make a function called, call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it check for semi-solid platform. And uh, let's, you know, have a X coordinate for it to check for and a Y coordinate for it to check for. So we've already basically done code like this down here where we're finding our floor platform. So for our floor Y collision, we're basically doing that over here, but it's just kind of a, you know, we were also checking for solid walls and things like that. And we were trying to re return whole, you know, whole list and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to make its own function quite yet, but this will be useful to have for a lot of things. It'll be useful to have for objects that aren't your player that need to check for semi-solid platforms and things like that. So, so yeah, I, I'm just gonna walk through it again from the beginning. We're not gonna do any copy pasting because that is a shortcut to confusion if you ask me. So we're just gonna redo that again, but I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time. So let's do it. You know, first we must not be moving upwards and then we check for a normal collision. So we're gonna say if our Y speed is greater than or equal to zero, so we're moving downwards or we're, you know, we're not moving and there is a place meeting with our X position that we input up here, our X and our Y with an object semi-solid wall, then we can run our code. Now, like I said, we must not be moving upwards. That actually isn't a check that we used for finding our floor platform. Our floor platform is a little bit smarter because it doesn't matter if we're moving up or down or whatever. We're basically just checking for something directly below us. That's important for getting our floor platform, but as far as I'm concerned, anytime I wanna use this function, it's gonna be when something is moving downwards, right? Like you can imagine checking for like a projectile that an enemy was shooting to check for semi-solid platforms, right? 
right? And the only time that would make sense to do that is really if it was moving down. At least I think so. You can, if you want to, you can modify this to be the same as the floor platform version, but this just makes this a little bit simpler. I think it probably makes it a little bit less expensive to check for, if I had to guess. And in our instance, we're gonna be using this for whenever the player is moving downwards slopes or moving horizontally and trying to snap to slopes, right? So we, this won't matter if we're moving upwards. We don't need to waste our time with this check. So now we can just do what we did last time. So create a DS list to store all colliding instances of a semi-solid wall, right? Like we did last time. So save our list, oops, list equals DS list create. And remember we use instance place list to get all those instances. We're checking the same X and Y position. We're checking for semi-solid wall, just like up here. We're adding that to our DS list that we created and the order doesn't matter. So we can just say false. And because we're gonna be looping through all of these and this function returns the number of instances that it runs into, we can just save that number in our list size variable like this. So then we can loop through the colliding instances <laughs> and only return one if its top is below the player. Same principle. Oops. So yeah, let's let's do for loop. So we'll set it up exactly how we did last time. So for var i equals zero to start with, as long as our i is less than the size of our list, then uh, we can perform our loop and then add to the i variable. Great. And our check for semi-solid platform is to me, uh, going to function like place meeting. We might as well return the instance that we're running into. However, the importance of what we're gonna be using this platform for, remember we had to do a lot more intelligent stuff over here because we really wanted to find the one that was below the player yet still the highest up that the player should be running into and all that stuff. But for something like checking for our slopes, or like I said, if we wanted to have someone, you know, check for projectiles or an enemy object or something like that, I just wanna know if there's one in the way. That's, that's really the important thing. So Remember over here, we basically just checked if uh, if the bottom of our bounding box is less than or equal to the top of that, you know, platform that we're checking for minus its, you know, Y speed to compensate. Uh, that's just the same exact thing that we have to do here. So, and we're gonna do it the same way too. So we're gonna say if the floor of our bounding box bottom is less than or equal to the ceiling of Oh, and I guess we can uh, we can save the uh, list instance in a local variable like we did last time, just to make it exactly the same. So, so we're getting the specific instance from this DS list that we're looping through, and we're just saving it in its own local variable. So. Uh, if our bounding box bottom is less than the bounding box top of this guy, minus this guy's Y speed to compensate for its begin step event, then we have the object we're looking for. Now, normally what I would do is, because you know, like I said, we don't really need to compare the other ones because we're not looking for the tallest one. We're just making sure that there is one that we would be colliding with, right? So normally what I would do is I would uh, return either true, just if I wanted to do true or false, or I would return the list instance here because this is a function. Um, but we don't want to do return because what what return does is it will actually cancel out of the rest of the function. So it'll exit out of the loop, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but it will terminate our function before we have a chance to get rid of our DS list that we created. And because this is a data structure, like I said, we have to, we have to delete these whenever we make them. We have to make sure to free that memory back up or it'll eventually start slowing our game down. So we're not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go up to the top of this function and I'm going to say create a return variable, create. And I'm gonna call this var rtrn underscore like that. And um, so, like I said, we can make this be a true or false, or we could make it return an ID, this ID. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. Since we're getting this ID, we might as well return it. So by default, let's say there's a return is gonna be no one, right? So th there's, there's not been a collision. There's not an instance ID to return. So at the bottom of our function, I can say return our variable. And so then I can say, uh, we can return this variable that we created up here. So by default, it's no one. And then if there is one over here, we can say return equals our list instance. So turn the ID of a semi-solid form. Very cool. And since we're not gonna be doing any more comparing, uh, we can also exit the loop early by setting i to be the size of our list size, right? Because if we've returned one, we really don't need to do this loop anymore. We don't need to check any of the other ones. It's irrelevant because we're already getting n instance. So if we set i to be list size, then by the time it comes back up here, it'll be like, oh, i is not less than list size anymore. So uh, it'll just move on and we won't do any more needless calculation. So yeah. And yeah, remember how I made a big deal about needing to uh, destroy our list and that's why we had to not do the return up here and so we made our return variable? Yeah, in the video I completely just literally forgot to do that. So uh, yeah, just 
right after we do our loop and we're done with that, all we have to do is add the line um, DS list destroy our list to free up the memory so we don't eventually get a memory leak. Uh, and this is a pretty important time to do it, especially because this is something that is checking every frame and every time we're, uh, we run this check, uh, we could be creating a lot of DS lists. It would probably still take a long time to actually crash your game, but um, yeah, that is very important and I just totally forgot to do it. Uh, it does go to show you how easy it can be to forget to clean up data structures and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, the speed at which I go in these videos is very slow, so it makes it very easy to forget things like this, but uh, that's why it's important that I don't forget or I come back and show you because that would have been stupid. But anyways, carry on. So now we can use this function to check for a semi-solid platform anywhere. And it works exactly how we would expect it to. So we can go back to our step event and go to our downwards collisions or downward slopes right here. And we can just add that check over here. Yep, it picks me up. Look at that. There it is. Okay, man. I, hey, I'm not even gonna do this one. Watch that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this. What the f Excuse me, friend. This is not the gaming I asked for. Okay, so remember how I said everything's a little uh, a little touchy, huh? We can do this like a million times. Uh, Jump up, jump around, all good. And then if I do this, still good. And then if I do that, still good. And then if I do that, still good. And if I do that, Oh, now we're not good. Uh, yeah. I suppose we've like sub pixel moved enough to a point where uh, perhaps uh, on our X coordinate or something, uh, we're, we're at an appropriate sub pixel. What seems to actually be happening is our floor platform variable doesn't seem to be picking this up properly. So I'm gonna try something really quick and I'll be back. No! Okay, yelling didn't work. I'm gonna try one more thing. So, uh, one moment, I'm gonna stare at this for a second. It only starts happening after a very specific circumstance, which again is probably related to just like sub pixels. It's not consistent. Well, it, it is consistent. Okay, I'm testing it. It's very inconsistent happening on moving platforms, but uh, I got it to happen maybe one every like 20 times or something like that, which is not what we want. <coughs> Hi. Uh, yeah. This sucks, man. Kind of makes me want to scream and cry and maybe shit myself, but <laughs> I'm a role model. I can't be doing that now, can I? <sighs> Not on company time anyways. I said it was touchy, man. I said this stuff was touchy. You didn't believe me. You were like, touchy, what? And I was like, yeah, it is. A very sensitive system. Which, you know, is probably indicative of my abilities. You probably shouldn't trust me so much. Okay, so here's here's what we've done. I've done a lot of testing, and uh, this was the obvious solution that I didn't want to do because I wanted it to be a, or this is an obvious solution that I didn't want to do because it's a little forceful, a little duct tapey. But here's the thing: it works. It's not complex, and it should fit into everything totally fine. So what I've basically done first, I've created a variable called downslope semi-solid, right? And I put that in my create event under my moving platforms, under my floor plat, because they're they're gonna be kind of closely tied together. So downslope semi-solid, and this is going to be uh, specifically returning a semi-solid platform if we run into one while we're trying to move down a slope, right? Which is useful that we ultimately did decide to make a check for semi-solid platform return either no one or the actual instance instead of true or false. So that's helpful. Um, so if not, you might want to change this to list instance if you just went with true or false, but you might want to, uh, you do want to. So that was good. But anyway, so now what are we doing here? So I've turned this back to how I had it before. No more checks are added right here. This is the same exact check we were doing as we were going down slopes. But first, before we do it, I'm resetting the down slope semi-solid variable to no one. Uh, by default, there's not going to be a collision there. Just, you know, that makes sense. Then, while inside of this check, now that we know that we're going down a slope, now we want to check for a semi-solid platform in here and save it in our downslope semi-solid. And just like before, precisely move down the slope if there, oh wow, look at this, there isn't a semi-solid in the way, right? This is the same thing as what we were trying to do. So we're saying if there 
uh, is not a semi-solid platform in my way, then we can precisely move myself down to the slope and snap down the slope at that 45 degree angle. However, now we have this specific platform that got in our way saved, right? We know for a fact we want this platform to, to be in our way. And what's happening in the code is through very, very specific circumstances or sub pixels or anything like that, this platform is just squeaking through where we find our floor platform, right? So where we find this variable here in this code, that platform is just getting left behind probably by some very, very, very small margin of error, right? And uh, we can set it up consistently, at least I could. Maybe maybe in your game, you weren't able to recreate this problem, but that's kind of the, the funny thing about it is it seems to be a very, very specific circumstance in which this happens. So basically what we can do is after we get done with finding the floor platform, and before we check if it ex if it you know is still actually under us we can do this we can just say if our instance exists our downslope semi solid so if there is a semi solid platform that got in our way we can just set our floor platform to be that semi solid object but essentially we're just making an exception for this code this this quote unquote smart code uh, or I should say more complex code that's automated and we can just tell our game hey there was a semi solid in the way so just force it to be that and because we have have nice things like this so uh, you know down here we're checking if our floor platform exists um, we're doing things like this we're getting it out of a semi-solid wall if it is a semi-solid and down here whenever we are uh, are snapping our platforms and things like that we only snap if there's not a solid wall in the way and things like that so overwriting our floor platform variable even if one was found here uh, is not going to give us or I should say should not give us any collision issues because of the other cleanups that we've done down there and the other checks and stuff so it should be totally fine to just overwrite this variable because because we know for a fact that this is going to be a very important floor for us. So in adding this line of text before this check here and after we find our floor platform and then, you know, making sure we got our variable while going down our slopes, uh, I have not been able to recreate this bug. I have not been able to recreate this issue no matter uh, what I do, the different speeds. If I do the thing I was doing before, um, you'll notice this platform is moving at a different speed, which could change that sub pixel value or whatever was happening. But I've found that that one also, whenever I had the old code, this setup could still recreate it. And uh, this also lets me test going down slopes onto a moving platform like this, a moving semi-solid. So it seems totally, totally fine, totally functional. You can see actually, there's an interesting little thing happening, which I think is a remnant of this, is uh, when I'm, especially when I'm going to, can't really tell the lower speeds, actually you can't tell at all at the lower speeds, but when I'm going very fast, sometimes uh, you can tell like the setup is happening, right? So yeah, like right there you see, the player is kind of, whenever swapping to this um, semi-solid platform, there's like a little bit of space right there that's clearly happening, kind of coming off the wall for like a second. So yeah, you can see the player's hand goes in the air for like a split second. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just, I just wanted to point that out to you because there's definitely a touchier way to fix this. Like I said, you know, a very specific way. Um, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a wart, you know, it's a wart. I don't, we, we don't, we don't like this. It's a strange little thing that works a little bit weird, but the more important thing in this circumstance is making sure that we don't weirdly go through this platform because that would be something the player doesn't expect. And, uh, what's creating that space, funnily enough, is our like coyote time and stuff, right? Like we're basically, it seems like we're not registering a wall anymore. Um, and what's happening with that is uh, our player is basically, you know, going into the air for a second, like running flat for a second and whatever. But it's such a short amount of time that this happens, actually, that both of our coyote timers that we have uh, actually totally cover it. So the, the one real, real issue aside from it, you know, looking a little bit strange if you're just staring at it and like just trying to really find the issue there. Um, the one issue I would actually really have with this would be, um, you know, could the player's jumping input be dropped in that time because the player's no longer on the ground but because of our coyote timers that's actually not the case uh the player should always be able to jump there's not a frame where the player's input will be dropped and now we know that the player will never accidentally not get picked up 
buy one of these. And this this little oddity will only happen in the circumstance that our player is, um, you know, going down a slope and walking into a semi-solid platform, which to be honest with you, is probably extremely unlikely that that is even going to be a scenario that happens at all in your game. So uh, it's it's your choice what you want to do. There's a good chance. You, I mean, you know, maybe you've just been kind of tuning out this whole time while I've been working on this problem because you don't care about this issue at all. But, um, but you know, that that's without seemingly busting anything else in my system, this was the fastest way to fix it. A little duct tapey, but, um, there doesn't seem to be any downsides except for just visually you get that one little bit of space and you get that like single little frame where, um, the player switches to the, to the jumping sprite. Uh, and again, this is probably a really unlikely scenario to even happen in your game. I don't see a lot of games that have like exact level design like this, right? Like it's kind of weird, but. Um, I just wanted to make a system that worked and I wanted to give it to you so you could have as much freedom as you wanted with your level design and your platformer. Um, I tested this at lower speeds as well, like 0.25 walking speed, which is very, very, very slow. So uh, I, I think it, it should be fine. You know, I think it should be all right. But this is a, absolutely an area you could criticize me in on this series. But that being said, I've been trying to make this for a long time. <laughs> So I don't want to mess with it anymore. Uh, it, it still works really well, if you ask me, especially as far as the amount of utility you get out of it. See, like right now, it's not even happening. It's just once you do that weird setup, that weird specific setup that, again, maybe you can't even recreate. Um, yeah, see, it's it's just totally fine right now. So, uh, yeah. And, and I've also noticed that it doesn't really do that at lower speeds. That's at this very fast 3.5 speed that I noticed that that happens at. I, I noticed I can't really, it doesn't have that effect. The player isn't going fast enough to like even be registered as being in the air at a two movement speed or anything like that so yeah anyways i'm not going to talk about it anymore just uh sorry that there is that little issue that got overlooked i imagine also part of it might be because uh this is not gridlocked you see it's it's at like a, an offset of where like the bounding box top of these would be right like normally you do things in 16 increments and like i said the um what I imagine is the issue here is the fact that in our floor collision calculation, we're sometimes using the bounding box top of objects. It should be ignoring it for slopes as far as I can recall, but um, if I had to guess, I, I would bet the setup probably won't work in this scenario. Like I probably can't do, let me test. Yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, I'll be able to get that weird result with um, this platform here. However, the, the, the problem was is that this moving platform, you know, will show up at things like that. And sometimes you do just want to put walls in weird places and stuff like that. So yeah, I think, uh, I think it functions. I think it functions well. It solved that issue. I think that weird little hiccup is much better than one in 20 or one in 30 times accidentally passing through a moving platform like that. I think that would that's really bad. And, um, you know, in this one, it was like once I got the setup going, I could never not pass through this. So that was really bad. How often, like, when is that going to kill the player? When is that going to cause an unfair death for a player? Chances are probably not often. How often are you going to do this in your level design? Chances are not often. So was it going to be an issue that much in the first place? Who knows? But now it's not. Hey, turns out there's another fix to be done. Who could have guessed? That's crazy, right? It's very related to what we just did, and it's going to look very similar, so I decided to just go ahead and put the fix here. It seemed to be an issue that cropped up with semi-solid platforms and moving solid platforms interacting with each other. We haven't done moving solid platforms yet, but it doesn't matter. The fix can be put right here. It doesn't have anything uh, to specifically do with them, but I'll show you what the issue is, and then we'll talk about it. Massive shout out to Patreon member Avian D Bird for pointing this out to me. They were following along with the Patreon videos, but they were using a uh, high resolution art. So which basically is just proportionally the same thing, but you know, everything is scaled up uh, and it was scaled up quite a bit. It was pretty high resolution art, which is really cool. And I assumed my system would work pretty perfectly for any size of art, but uh, I didn't test it to that extent. And basically there's a small little issue that is very similar to that downward slope issue where whenever using really high pixel speeds, which high resolution art needs to use much faster moving platforms and things like that, 
to achieve the same effect as our low resolution stuff that we've been doing, where the player could kind of ignore being dropped off on like a semi-solid platform in, in this scenario that you're seeing on screen right now. Chances are you probably were never gonna run into this because most people don't do high resolution art like this because it's very difficult, but you might as well add this in because it makes the system a little bit better. So like I said, we're gonna use the same principle as how I fixed that downward slope issue. I put it right here. This right here is the fix in addition to one extra line down here. So let me walk you through it really quick. Like I said, it's the same sort of thing. We were essentially every now and then missing a, a semi-solid platform while we were being carried downwards by a solid moving platform. Now, unfortunately, because this is such a similar issue to that downward slope issue, it means that were I aware of both of these issues well before I started working on this series, I probably could have addressed them better in the core of the system. So that that is a regret of mine, but this is basically a this is basically just like a little hot fix, a little bit of duct tape. But the thing is, it works. It doesn't require us to rewrite the core of the system, which would be insane to do at this point. Uh, and and you know, honestly, it's one of those things where this exact platforming scenario was probably pretty unlikely to even happen in the first place in your game because it's very strange, but. It is strange, and that's what makes it fun. So I don't want you to be forbidden from doing this in your game because it's weird and fun. So here's what we did. Because this only happens whenever we're on a floor platform, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a regular Y check, which is very similar to the one that we see right here, right? So we're gonna check right below us, plus any downwards moving speed that our player currently has. Uh, and normally with this list, we're checking down also by our sort of terminal velocity, which in a higher resolution game, uh, this move plat max Y speed would probably be a lot higher than what I currently have it set to. But the point is, what we're doing is we're going to, when checking for semi-solid platforms, we're going to replace checking down for our maximum platforms moving Y speed. And if we're already on a moving platform, we're just going to add its downwards Y speed. With the same principle that we did up here, we only want to check for a downwards moving speed with this floor platform. So that's why we're doing the max zero and Y speed max zero in the Y speed of our floor platform. Uh, we're going to add that to this Y check here. And that's when we're going to look for a semi-solid platform. And if there is one, we're just going to hard return it to a local variable we're calling semi-solid. So we're just, you know, we're saying, yeah, there's one down there. And uh, we're going to exclude that semi-solid platform from any needing to be any of these checks, right? Uh, if there is a semi-solid platform there, we're just going to say that absolutely is a contender for being our floor platform. Because remember, our check for semi-solid platforms does a lot of checks in itself. So if we get a semi-solid platform here with this function that we created, then we're just going to go ahead and say that we can include it as a contender whenever we're going through our list of objects that we got up here. Uh, and the way we need to do that is, first of all, I've added more parentheses here. You see they're both highlighted. We basically took the old thing that we had, which was which was this, right? And we're just gonna put this all in its own condition. So I'm gonna put parentheses there and parentheses there. So again, we're wrapping this whole thing up because we want to do this complicated check that we made. We can say, or our uh, list instance is equal to that, oh geez, that semi-solid that we got right here. Um, and yeah, that'll do it. Uh, and I'm just gonna put that back how it was. I put these in parentheses. This isn't really necessary, but you can. And then I just put this here and put a high speed fix, right? That's what I put up here. This is a fix specifically for high resolution and high speed projects, which a high resolution project will have higher speeds. Uh, and I'm not gonna run the game and show you it working because my game already worked because it's not a high resolution or high speed project. So you wouldn't see any difference for me. I'll show you on screen a high resolution project, uh, what it looked like before and what it looks like now. And uh, again, I, I tested this because again, uh, Avian sent me their project file so I could mess around with it. And I also sent them the fix. I just sent them this code and uh, they implemented it in their game and did a little bit of testing themselves. I did too. And together we have sort of confirmed that this this does fix that weird behavior. So yeah, that's it. Very small addition. Semi-solid platforms are clearly kind of getting lost in very certain circumstances. And I won't get into it, but it seems like uh, these stem from the same issue that probably could have been addressed at its base had these been things that I found before editing the videos. One of which I found while editing the video, so that was fine. But again, this one I did not find and would not have found because I wasn't gonna go back and test this with really large high resolution art. So again, thank you so much, Avian, your champion, and everyone say thanks in the comments. 
and was also very fortunate that this was found about a week before this episode goes up. So very, very fortunate. Many thanks. And yeah, that's that for that little extra bit. All right. I'm sick of this. I'm real sick of this. You know, one thing that I should have done that I think I'm going to do really quick is weird. Uh, I'm going to make these a little see-through. That probably would have helped with that whole thing uh, now that I think about it. That probably just would have been a great idea to do this a long time ago. But now I'm going to do this because they're semi-solid, so you should be able to see things in the tops of walls through them. At least, you know, as far as testing goes, I think. Yeah, that makes more sense. Should have done that, but oh well. Okay, so all that being said, I swear we're almost done. Please don't don't make fun of me. I don't know. Um, I'm going to do one more test really quick. You don't have to watch. Don't worry. Okay, so last thing that we want to do that's very important to this is being able to voluntarily fall through our semi-solid platforms when we're holding down and we press a button, probably the jump button. And, and by golly gee, am I happy to say that this is, this is a simple one. This actually is a simple one. So let's go into our player's create event and uh, under my floor platform and the new semi-solid, I'm gonna create a variable called forget semi-solid. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be storing a specific semi-solid platform uh, that we want to ignore. Um, there's multiple ways, you know, you would think that the easiest way to ignore a semi-solid platform is to just kind of force yourself to move below the top of its hitbox, which is true. That is how we're going to be doing this, but it helps smooth out some things and it just makes sense to uh, also store that object in its own variable so we can't keep colliding with it by accident, especially when it comes to moving platforms. That's the big one. So here Here's, here's where I want to add this. I want to go down to where we actually move our Y coordinate. Here we go right down here. So if we have a moving platform, then we now want the ability to manually fall through a semi-solid platform. So first, uh, to fall through a semi-solid platform, we want to check a couple things with our inputs, right? So we only want to fall down a semi-solid if, let's say, we want to say we're holding down and we press the jump button, right? Which I don't think we have an input for down yet. So we can go up to get our controls. Yeah, we don't have a direction input for down. So let's make one. So that's it. Same as these. Down key, down key, down key. Checking for S because that's the bottom for WASD and uh, D-pad down for my controller. So now we have the down key back here to manually falling through. So first we want to say if we're pressing the down key and I want to say if we pressed the jump button. So jump, uh, what do I call it? No, jump, jump key pressed. That's a jump key pressed. So that's our first check. Then we can make sure we have a floor platform that's a semi-solid. Okay, so that's what this looks like. We've done this a bunch of times. So if my instance exists, my floor platform and its object index is a semi-solid wall or it's a child of a semi-solid wall and you know, make sure that these are in parentheses because we're using an or here. So this exists and either this is true or this is true, which just means it's a semi-solid wall. Then we can try and move our player out of, you know, below the semi-solid wall and tell the player to forget it. And before anyone comments, someone probably will. Yes, this is a redundant check from up here because up here we check if there is a floor platform that exists and here we check if it's a semi-solid wall so we can make sure we move out of it. We technically could put the manually fall through semi-solid platform here and then just check for buttons. You know, if the buttons are pressed, then do it down there. Um, that technically would be more efficient. That would make more sense. Uh, just for organization's sake, I'm just putting it here just so, you know, we can have like this separate a little thing to look at and we can just talk through the logic of all of it. If afterwards you want to move it up there, be my guest. These extra checks aren't going to take your game from 2000 FPS to uh, to 20 FPS, I promise you. So code being readable and understandable to you is very important if you need to go back and change and fix things. So anyways, now we check if we can go below the semi-solid, right? Because uh, there are times where we don't want to do that. And there's a couple reasons why we wouldn't want to go down a semi-solid, but uh, first we need to figure out, like for example, if we're running into a solid wall, like if we were to fall down, go a pixel below the top of our semi-solid wall, is there a wall in the way? like an actual solid wall in the way. And if there is, we don't really want to, you know, we don't really want to go down there. So first let's make a variable. I'm going to call it Y check. And this is going to be the Y position we're checking for when we do our place meeting function. So it's going to be our Y coordinate. Plus here's what we do. We're going to say either plus one just to check right down below us. Or if my floor 
platform has a Y speed, then we wanna check down that direction if that's faster. So if where the floor platform wants to take us next frame, is there gonna be a solid wall in the way when we try and move down from it? And then we're gonna do the plus one again because to move below our platform, which because of up here, we know that we should be basically directly on top of, all we need to do is move down one pixel, right? So this is where we're trying to move, is down that one pixel to go right below the, uh, the bounding box top of our floor semi-solid object. So that's gonna be our Y check. So if there is not a place meeting of our X position and our Y check position of a solid wall, then we can move below the platform. So just Y plus equals one, easy. There's something else we need to do with our Y coordinate, but I'd rather show you it not working first. So we're just gonna skip that part really quick. It's very simple. Our code right now will work very well for stationary and upwards moving platforms, but downwards moving ones is a little bit you know tougher because they're also gonna be moving downwards. So now we want to forget this platform for a brief time so we don't get caught again. So this is where our forget semi-solid platform comes into play. And this is just going to be our floor platform that we're on. This is the platform that we wanna forget, which means we're gonna have to retroactively uh, go back and add a check for this for a couple things, but that's okay. We'll do that in a second. But now we want to say no more floor platform. So uh, on ground, we can, or uh, sorry, set on ground, we can say false because that resets our my floor platform and tells our player that we're no longer on the ground anymore because we don't have a floor platform. So that's good. And that's it for the setup of that. Now we just need to uh, factor in our forget semi-solid because now we've stored it, but uh, we're not actually using it anywhere. So I'm sure you could imagine where we would want to use this, right? We we don't want our next floor platform to include our forgetting our semi-solid and same with checking um, here. Anytime we're checking for a semi-solid platform, we don't want to include that one. So in our function here, check for semi-solid platform before we check for anything else. So we can go right before this line. We can just say if my uh, list instance here is not equal to my forget semi-solid platform, right? So if it's not the one we're telling them to forget, then we can check and see if we want to return it. And then in our step event where we find our floor platform variable up here, that's also a check we want to add. And we can just add that check as soon as possible, right? Because no other factors should uh, override that. So I'm going to add an and in front of this, and I'm just going to say if my list instance is not equal to my forget semi-solid platform, right? You are no longer a contender if you are this variable. Right, and then uh, down here, we shouldn't need to add it because we've included uh, this check in our check for semi-solid platform, which means that anytime that we would set this, you know, we were setting it based on that exact function right here. So this should never return if it's our forget thing. So those are literally the only two places we needed to add it. So yeah, there's two more things to address, but one more thing I wanna add that's important before we test this is uh, if we press the jump key, we're checking for a jump key and if we're on the ground and and if we're on the ground and we press the jump key, we normally just jump. So basically we wanna say, let's not jump if we're holding the, uh, the down button. It's just an easy way to do this. So uh, let's find where we actually tell ourselves to jump up here where we're initiating the jump and uh, we can just add this check anywhere we can say and not down key right so if we're not holding the down key then do our jumps you could add another check for this if you wanted to where you say you know um you could be holding the down key to jump but just make sure that you're not on top of a semi-solid you know so actually you know yeah we could do that okay again you don't need to add this i just added a little thing and here's how i did it i wanted to get it all off this line because that was annoying me so i made a local variable called floor is solid and i basically said if there is a floor platform and it's an object wall and not an object semi-solid wall, then the floor is solid, which means if I'm not pressing the down key or the floor is solid, then it does a jump. Okay, here we go. Great. Great, it's working. Now, here's the issue. We haven't reset our forget semi-solid variable, right? So I can't land back on this now that I've fallen on top of it. Uh, but I reset it whenever I set a new one. So basically, this is a very, very simple fix. So let's just go to right around where we set all that uh, da, 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 that crazy stuff right here, manually fall through a semi-solid platform. Um, I'm gonna go after we actually move our Y coordinate 
and say reset forget semi solid variable. And I just wanna wait until after we move because the way we're gonna reset this is basically just if we have a forget semi solid, right? So if we have one and we are no longer touching it anymore in any way, we don't have to do any weird checks, any fancy semi solid platform check function that we made. Just if we're not touching it anymore, then we can reset this variable. Just, you know, set it to set it to no one. Easy peasy stuff. Because essentially we just want, you know, if we're above our forgotten semi solid, then that means that, you know, we should be able to fall on it again. And um, yeah, that uh, this does it. Uh, and you know, I did all that extra stupid work. So if I'm holding, I'm holding down right now, but I can still jump because I'm on a solid platform. Let me, uh, let me set up another little example here before we finish this with the moving platform. I'm going to put this wall right here and I'm going to put one where it actually, uh, it actually overlaps. So let's see here. Okay. So first of all, this is all fine, which is nice. Um, I can't fall down. I'm holding down and pressing jump, which means that, uh, because my floor platform is registering as the semi-solid, I can't jump in this circumstance, which is a little weird, but again, level design wise if you were to put these two together just don't have them overlap i'm just showing you um and then same with right here these two don't overlap but i still can't fall down just because there's a wall in the way so yeah pretty uh pretty good pretty good and so let's get on this thing and look at this so that's what happens whenever i go down you see i'm getting caught uh by it but whenever it's moving upwards or sideways i can uh, jump off of this thing fine the problem is whenever it's moving downwards and it keeps catching us so that's actually really really easy to do and it's kind of a it's kind of cute how we do it i kind of like it so right here we move below the platform and down below that we can say inherit any downward speed from my floor platform so it doesn't catch me and we already know the downward speed because we've got our Y check here. Oh, actually, I changed something because I looked at it and I was like, that's dumb. Why didn't I just do this? Well, this is why. Watch. Pay, pay attention. Don't pay attention. Listen. All right. We're just changing one thing, but don't look over it because that'll mess things up. We just want our Y check to be this value right here. Just either the positive one or the, uh, the Y speed, which in this case would be a downwards Y speed because, you know, it has to be greater than one. Otherwise, our Y check will just return one. So add this here. Add the Y plus Y check. I literally had this in my demo project, but for some reason I was like, it would make more sense to me if I put the Y plus sense here. Shut up, man. I spent so much time testing this thing and why don't I trust myself ever? He says after having to bug fix his stuff and look. Anyways, so the point is we now have this Y check variable, which is either returning a positive one or the downwards Y speed of our floor platform, essentially. Uh, so we can just say our Y speed is going to equal our Y check. So we can inherit the same speed. And then we can do minus one because again, we're adding one in both of these circumstances, but we already did that here. This we had to do so we could actually get below the platform. Um, but this one, we're basically just going to, uh, it also just helps the feel, right? Um, if the platform's going downwards and we suddenly pop off of this and forget it, uh, that's also, you saw what was happening was our player would like float for a second and then fall back down because their Y speed was zero. If we make our Y speed match what the other floor platform was doing, we will continue to move, which means means we will finish moving under it and we will be going at a speed at which it can't catch us. I guess unless it's falling even faster, but shut up. So yeah, look at that. Look at this. Oh man. Oh my God. Does that mean I'm done with this video? Does that mean you're done with this video? <laughs> does that mean does that mean you you and I can move on from this forever? Life, huh? Wow. Well, I mean that's it, right? That's it. Was there anything else? That was uh that was it. That was it. Uh yeah, this is this was a tough one. Family wedding. <laughs> Stop hitting me. Can't help it. I would say for me, the toughest one that I've made and probably for you, the toughest one that I've made also. Again, I, I always hate to say it, but you know, if, if things look different for you, if, if you know, you're, you're having inconsistencies, one, I sympathize with you, I promise. But you know, go back and check everything as best as you possibly can. Hopefully you've gained some knowledge over the course of this series. So, uh, which we're not done with, obviously we're doing solid, semi-solid, we're doing solid platforms and uh, maybe something else, I think. But this was the tough part and and this uh solid moving platforms are based on all of this code like we've done most of the solid moving platforms there's just a couple other things that we need to add which are easier so yeah first of all uh i'm proud of you for even getting to the end of this video and hearing this part 
even if your code's looking a little weird. But yeah, um, so if something's going wrong, please just just check. Uh, come back to this video in a couple days, you know, start it again. I know that sounds awful, but um, I promise, you know, you, you can make it work. We can, we can do it. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'm sure there are, on this video in particular, there's probably gonna be a lot of people asking questions. Uh, Unfortunately, in general, I don't have the time to answer question comments. And when it comes to a video like this, um, like I said, it's touchy, it's touchy, touchy stuff. So it would probably be very difficult for me to specifically address your issue anyways, if you're having one. But because I have the code working here, I did a lot of off-screen testing to make sure any of the weird stuff was, was hammered out. It's never gonna be 100% perfect. You are supposed to bug test games for a pretty good amount of time to polish things up. Um, I've been doing it for a few weeks, like straight almost with this code, but clearly stuff will get through the cracks because uh, I don't have time to professionally full time bug test this code as if it was a game where I was about to go off for the next 12 months to develop this game, right? Um, but I still tried to put a lot of time and effort into making this as solid as I possibly could. So the testing I did off screen here, the testing I've done before, hopefully I'm, I'm sure it will all hold up for you. So if there is a big issue that you're having that it doesn't seem like I'm having, you know, just please just go back and check out the video, really check out your code and compare every character. You know, it's, it's annoying, I know it is, but especially as we are adding more and more code to a big code base that we already have, right? Before this video started, we had a lot of code anyways, and then we've just added more and more. So it's tough, it's hard, but I believe in you. If you need to take a break, take a break. But uh, otherwise, if you finished this one, don't stop watching this series. If you finished it and your code is working right now, do not stop watching this series because you by far just did the hardest part in my in my HO, okay? So don't, uh, don't lose out on getting solid platforms, solid moving platforms. That's cool. Not, I don't know how many games have though. I mean, plenty of games have them, but you know, a lot of games try and uh, avoid stuff like that, you know? So yeah, anyways, uh, proud of you. Nice work. And I'll see you in the next one. Wow. Get a load of serious McGee over here. Shut up, dude. I'm kidding. That was basically an outro already. So I'm going to try and keep this one short, but, uh, I do just want to double down on saying great job. Seriously. I'm not patronizing you. It would be a lot more obvious if I was doing that, I swear. I'm just in a great mood right now because you got through this and I'm super proud of you. Cause now you've got slopes and now you've got semi-solid platforms and semi-solid moving platforms. And again, the solid platform code is so easy to tack onto this. This is this was most of the work for all of the moving platforms. So I'll be straight with you. I'll be proud of you at the end of the next episode whenever you have the moving solid platforms. Pr pr proportionally, I am more proud of you right now than I probably will be then. So now I've given you, uh, now I've given you a choice. Now, if you continue forwards, uh, that's you get no intrinsic reward from me. Yeah, I'll be proud of you, but not that much. Now you have to do it for yourself. Do it for your game. I'm kidding. I'm gonna be proud of you all the way. I'm actually gonna be so stoked to see the view count of the final video to see how many people actually got all the way through because that's this was a trial a trial and a tribulation and a half let me tell you what it's also why i'm in a great mood because i'm recording the outro of this video and hopefully i don't have to touch it ever again uh i gotta i'm gonna edit this outro and then of course i have to watch this two hour video like one or two more times just to make sure there's no more mistakes and just pray to todd howard that I don't have to redo anything. But yeah, proud of us. Look at us, huh? Okay, well, that really is it. Just keep going. No reason not to if you're listening to this right now. No reason not to keep going with the last two episodes. So with that being said, it is time for some Patreon shoutouts, which again, I'm just going to iterate. I've had a long couple days, and <laughs> I've just been uh, editing and scheduling all of these videos all at once so I can get back to my work on my game which I haven't been able to do for over a month now. I have no I have no idea how long it's actually been, but um, this series took a long time to make. So I have to get back to it. So for me, it's only been a day since the first episode went up on YouTube. So these shout outs are gonna be from them. But if you've joined the Patreon recently, then I will be editing the final video the night before uh, it actually goes up. So that one will include all of the star gamers, all my little gaming cabbages. It's the second time I've used cabbage. Uh, that one that one will include everyone because I'm very, very thankful, which means right now in this very moment I'm recording this, I am especially thankful to Nixionic, Null, Caden Brightwell, Joseph Sandlin, Midnight, Aogio, 
Christian Donovan, Jazzy, DT, Richard DeLuca, Arya Sparks, Maya, Robel, Crazy Poo Chucker, Harrison, Joshua, Takuni, Ruben Leavell, Moody, Mikel Alexander, David Rivas, NerdBoutique.com, Carlos Acosta, John Brown, Frog Salt, Joshua Hurry, Marco Romo, Howie, Sam Live, Andreas Premel, Bill Lati, AOAO, Amar Ali, Nick Lee, Matthew Carr, C, Mancat, Patrick, Yaskrit Brar, Dean Blackborough, Micah Smith, Matt Lumens, Jonah Newman, Finn Leable, and BB Samurai. Thank you guys so much. I hope you got a lot out of this video, and let's just keep on scooting right down to the end, huh? Finish line's right over there. You see it? Just squint hard. It's right there.